Oh, thank you. Meeting has been recorded. So this is Scott Schaefer. We're talking. This is the um, September 2021 Goose Hollow Neighborhood Association Board Meeting, the GHFL. Welcome everyone. And we're just going to start with approval of the minutes from July 2021. Anybody have any um, uh, move to accept the minutes? Uh, do we need to do introductions first? Um, sure, let's go ahead and do that. I'm Scott Shea from the oh, president of GHFL. And um, hi. <laughs> I don't have my video on. <clears throat> it's okay, Annie, just introduce yourself. Oh, this is Annie Meharry, and I'm a member. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Uh, Eric Simon. Doug. You're on mute, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hi. Doug is Cook, GHFL board member. Yeah. All right, Vadim. Hi, everybody. My name is Erski, board member and uh, secretary, the best job around. Hey, Vadim, can I interrupt? You have the most amazing webcam or something like that because it it um, uh, it fuzzes out the background or something like that. Do you have like a, a, a special computer or a special camera? Because I like that. No, uh, Zoom does that. Um, it, you can set it in the background settings and do the uh, fuzzy background. Um, I'm protecting my privacy. Oh, okay. You must need to have a, a particularly powerful computer. Uh, do that, I don't think I can do that on my end. Am I the only one getting a lag with Scott's uh, voice or is everybody else? Scott, I, I think your son is playing Xbox downstairs. Um, <laughs> Let me, let me close down. My computer is very underpowered. I'm gonna be changing that shortly. Um, let me go ahead and shut down just about everything and hopefully we won't have the lag. While you do that, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm glad you brought that up because I thought it was my um, internet connection. Tiffany Hammer, I'm the VP um, and also the co-public safety livability chair. And Vadim, I, don't, I think it's fuzzy back there because you didn't clean your house today. <laughs> it's really steamy in here, actually. I just took a steam room. Uh, Bridget? Hi, Bridget Bimrose. I serve as treasurer. Over and out. All right, Catherine? I'm Catherine Sims, board member. John? Hey, Sean O'Donnell, board member and uh, co chair of Goose Holidays. All right, Alan? Alan Clausen, Northwest of Tanner. And Janet. Um, good evening, I'm Janet Kraft and I'm just a neighbor. I live at the Vista St. Clair and I absolutely hate this huge building on for Block 7 Moderna. I, I'll, I just hate it. So I wanted to learn about, you know, probably the less than great news about what's going on there. Well, thank you for coming, Janet. Thank uh, you, Laurie. Hello, <clears throat> Laurie Goldsmith here. I'm a, a neighbor living in Goose Hollow with the Legends. And Laurie, are you a, a neighbor? And just tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh yeah, I've lived in Goose Hollow about five or six years, and I've been following all the Modera, you know, main stuff, and I'm very interested in the the neighborhood meetings, and I really value um, the content. So thank you all for um, putting on these meetings that are very informative. Great, well, thank you for coming. And I'm sorry, there's someone here who's just a number. So there's no name listed. Yeah, I think that's me. I'm sorry, I can only join by phone right now. I'm Kevin Diaz and uh, we just moved into the neighborhood on Market Street Drive and uh, happy to be here and glad that there's an active neighborhood association. <laughs> Great, Kevin, where did you move from? Uh, unincorporated Washington County, but I lived in Goose Hollow about 
25 years ago, so it's nice to be back. Oh, well, happy to have you. All right, anybody else that I missed? All right, let's get to the minutes. Who wants to move to accept the minutes? Then we can have a discussion about changes after we have motion. I'll move to accept the minutes. Okay, Vadim, second. Second. Sean? All right. No? All right. Um, um, all objections to accepting the minutes, please raise your hand. Otherwise, you will be counted as accepting. <laughs> Unseen, it's unanimous uh, that the uh, minutes are accepted for July 2021. Thank you again, Vadim, for doing a great job of putting those together in a timely manner. Treasurer's report. Bridget? Hey, everyone. I mailed out my report just a little bit earlier today. And our balance right now in our checking is $1,454.42. Um, and in the Excel sheet I shared, I included two uh, checks that have been written um, for Goose Holidays. Uh, in our savings, we have $5,125.72. Um, and then that third Excel sheet uh, covers Goose Holiday costs. So while our checking seems to be going down, uh, it's, uh, it's because we are uh, writing checks for Goose Holidays and we did have a net profit last year. That's it, over and out. Great, hey, Bridget, just... Um, just for clarification, we did within that limit, I think it was like maybe $1,600 or so, 1500 something like yes, that. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, good. Well, we'll have, Sean, I didn't put you on for a specific report on Goose Hollow days, uh, so I apologize, but we will get to that um, later on in the meeting, so you can go ahead and discuss a little more about expenses and vendors and uh, security and all that other stuff. Uh, I had a question I'd like to ask. Um, with Goose Hollow days, uh, have any donations come in yet? I know there was one, I guess, a pledge from BMW. Yeah, Eric, Jerry's managing that. I did check in with Melody about it. So I think maybe we'll do a post-mortem after the event. Maybe not the best use of words, but, um, and I'll get all those details from Jerry unless I misunderstood uh, because I haven't seen any of that money at this point in time. Okay, thank you. All right, good. Um, next uh, order of business is the old business and board emails exchanged this month. Most of them involve um, a discussion on um, the last item on our agenda, which is board decorum, and we'll go ahead and get to that. Um, if uh, anyone has any uh, desire to take a look at them, then we have. Uh, I have another email that came in. have them available. They're all public documents because it's communications amongst board members. You do. There was, was it specifically uh, to you, Eric? Yeah, there was an email that came in. Actually, it was forwarded by you, and it was also to the... Um, uh, parking committee uh, dealing with an issue with a student at uh, Lincoln High School. Right. And so I explained what had gone on in the past where they were given passes. And at that time they were given by the address. So it was very easy to exchange. I don't know what the process is now, but also that the individual who requested it said they spoke to somebody at the school. However, uh, they didn't speak to the right person. Uh, they need to speak to an administrator. And I don't know how it was resolved, whether you heard back from them or not, whether they were asking for a hardship pass. Right. I, I haven't heard. Um, Jill Ross is usually the person that we communicate over there. She's kind of like the business manager and deals with these sorts of things. So uh, we'll, I'll, I'll follow up with her, Eric, or someone on the parking um Transportation Safety and Livability Committee. Can well, either that, if you don't hear from them, then obviously they were probably able to work it out in terms of the uh, guest use uh, passes. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, anything else? Um, I also, I'm looking, I don't see anything. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move to the new, I'm sorry. No, I, I have a question. I don't see on the agenda where you have anything listed on decorum. 
Um, it's the last bullet point. Um, I don't see it on mine. What do you have under new business? It goes under, let me see. Now it says block seven, update on safety, election, goose hollow picnic, uh, the board decorum. Uh, I would just like to say, is that when I'm going to be able to present the information that I have on some of the emails that have gone on? Yeah, I assume that's in the discussion of board decorum. Do you have that bullet point in your agenda? Yes, I do. I just want to make sure that the specific emails that have gone around to our board will be able to be discussed. Otherwise, I'll bring, I'll ask for a motion to put it on the agenda right now. Well, the, the intent was that all that would be discussed during the board decorum discussion. So that will be able to be presented. Okay. Is it no uh, block seven with your name? Yes. Um, Jerry, block seven in Madura, Maine. Why don't you just give us an update of where we are on that project? Sure. The the um, the design commission will meet tomorrow, and we'll find out whether they approve or disapprove. Hey, Eric. I think we need you to mute, maybe. <laughs> Eric, are you okay? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I got to uh, take care of something. So I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to mute people if there's a lot of noise, okay? okay. Yeah, please mute. Mute it. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. The, uh, I, I think we're assuming that, the, that uh, the design commission is going to approve the building. Uh, when they do that and they're decision is published, then we have uh, just a couple of couple of weeks to to uh, uh, file an appeal with the city of uh, city council. The 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 findings that the that the uh, design commission uh, publishes will determine kind of what the uh, what the substance is of the appeals that we file. We have to answer their uh, their statements, their their findings. Um, and given that that we have either brought up or answered just about every issue that that has been in play here, uh, that shouldn't be all that difficult. Um, the city council will then have the, the uh, task of uh, putting us on an agenda for some future date. And we will have between uh, our filing and the uh, council's uh, agenda date uh, to come up with our arguments and uh, configure who it is that's speaking to which issue and um, in general, how we manage our our uh, our presentation, and that's going to be kind of important. So, it's going to be incumbent on all of us that have taken part in this discussion to um, uh, to be paying attention over the next couple of weeks. I see your lips moving. Sorry, Jerry. Um, all of the issues that need to be raised by opponents to the development have been raised in your opinion and are part of the record? You know, I think so. Um, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that, that something might come up in the, in, the, um, in the findings of the design commission that we didn't anticipate. Um, and given the, the history of, of such issues, in front of the city council, I doubt that we'll be uh, shouted down by the by the court clerk or the council clerk. Um, they've they've usually been pretty permissive about that sort of thing. So, my expectation is that uh, the ball is kind of in our court to to manage our. Um, our presentation to the city council.
dead air. Come on, somebody. Hey, Sean. Hey, Jerry, happy to follow up with that. That's a fantastic recap of where we stand with respect to prepping the appeal and anticipating um, the design commission and therefore the land use review uh, vote. Uh, and that, that again is on, on Thursday, the 23rd. Um, and also just a, a quick shameless plug here, the Friends of Goose Hollow will be meeting on Wednesday, the 22nd. Um, we'll be sending out an invite here uh, to everyone on the, ma uh, the mailing list that will include links to registering for um, the, the hearing itself, though, to Jerry's point, no testimony, verbal nor written, can be provided. Um, and then, of course, you know, Jerry outlined those, those the timeline thereafter, if, if the Design Commission does indeed vote in favor of the project, um, what that appeal process would take. And then um, I, I think it's worth noting here, too, I think there would be a, um, for those in oppose who, who want to organize, for instance, Goose Hollow will be working on um, helping folks coaching right on the, the, the way to provide testimony to city council during that appeal hearing. Um, that, that will be you know, more to come, more to come on that. I, I also want to add uh, one thing, which is we had a, um, a planning meeting earlier in the month and we did vote on a motion to file an appeal if necessary. So if the Neighborhood Association sponsors an appeal, then the cost of the appeal is waived. And um, the planning committee does have executive authority to do that for board and present that to the board to give them the opportunity to present and vote on it as well. Yeah, that's right, Scott. Um, but actually, given that there is a quorum of the board here right now, um, this would be a good time uh, for a motion to support an appeal should the uh, Design Commission rule against our position with respect to Modera, Maine. And I would make that motion. I'm sorry, I'm not even a member of the board. board. It has to come from one of you guys. Well, that's good. Do we hear a motion to support the decision um, of the planning committee to file an appeal if necessary. Hey, Scott, um, it cut out for me. Did it cut out when he was telling us what the motion or the appeal was? I didn't, I missed um, about a sentence. Is it me or is it anybody else? Will you repeat that again? I'm so sorry, just be quick. I had the same problem, Tiffany. And it's cutting out again. Or did you say it again? Um, is anybody else having this issue? Because I um, raise your hand. <laughs> yes. I want to make sure that we hear clearly what this is before we vote on it, because I didn't hear it the second time either. And thank you, Janet. Is that you, Janet? Is being delayed? Something's wrong, because I didn't hear it. I, it. The screen just went black on me. Okay. Tiffany, are you talking about me cutting out, which it has yeah. been tonight, or Jerry? Uh, you, I think you are. I could be wrong. Anybody else think it might be Scott's um, connection, but I didn't hear what he said. It cut out and then it cut out again. So is anybody else having, am I the only one And Janet? I got you back. Thank you, Janet. It could be me. I don't know. Um, well, is so, anybody having problems hearing me? Yeah, so I, I, as president, I really shouldn't be bringing motions to the floor, but if someone wants to bring a motion, um, then I think that might explain what the motion is for. Then we can have a discussion and then vote on it. Well, I had a, is the motion, didn't the planning um, committee pass a motion dealing with the appeal at their last meeting? So all we would have to do is approve that? No, no. Maybe I should, should step in here and, and clarify what the, the planning committee did. The planning committee voted to launch an appeal in the event that the design commission found uh, in favor of the Modera main application. The, uh, now, the board could simply say, we support the planning commission's or planning committees uh, uh, 
uh, <clears throat> the planning committee's position to appeal, or you could make your own motion and say, the Goose Hollow Foothills League board uh, votes to appeal the planning, the, excuse me, the design commission's uh, approval of Modura, Maine, should they vote to approve. So does somebody want to make a motion? Uh, I, I am so moved. Okay, um, just restate the motion for the record. Uh, I, I'd like to put a motion forward for us to acknowledge the planning and zoning committees. Uh, am I cutting out now? Oh gosh. No, no, you're fine, Sean. I think Scott's oh. cutting out and not hearing you though. It's my, my fault, yeah. My computer's okay. fault. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, so, so I, I'd like to submit a motion for the, uh, the board to acknowledge the planning and zoning committees. Um, it, it, you know, plan to submit an appeal if the if the design commission votes in favor of, uh, of approving Moderna Main Street. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Um, discussion. Any discussion? All right. Um, all in favor? Um, all opposed? Not seeing any opposition. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. And again, I apologize. I don't know what's going on with my computer. I'm gonna be replacing it shortly, but until then, um, it's just a lot of foobar, so I apologize. But I wanna give um, Janet and uh, Laurie a chance to ask their questions about the project if they have it. Um, I, I don't have any questions. Okay, Laurie? Laurie, is there anything? All right, no questions asked. We'll just go ahead and move on. Let's move on. Um, this is Tiffany really quick. Um, when do we know if they're like, if they deny the appeal, or I'm sorry, when do they uh, make a decision on Modera? Is there a date? Do we say a date? So the, the, the uh, design commission hearing is the 23rd. We think they will probably make a decision at that time, but there has to be a written document from the city that basically approves the project. And it, that's when the clock starts. So it's possible that they've already pre-prepared the document for the 23rd and that's when it's gonna take. That's why we've kind of preemptively talked about this appeal because we don't know exactly how much time we have and we can't wait until the next board meeting to approve it. Okay. Hey, Tiffany, how about it? You're up if you want to give, uh, give us a summary. Great. If anybody can hear me. Um, uh, core livability. I, I'm Tiffany Hammer, and I actually co share the public safety livability seat with Vadim Mazursky, my partner. I'll let him go first, and I'll go second if that's all right. Uh, yeah, that's perfectly fine, Tiffany. Is it, I'm reading your text right now, actually. Did you want me to speak about the charter or um, about the 110? Yes, Vadim, would you mind speaking briefly about the charter commission and then also measure 110, please, and any other, other issues? And then I'll follow behind you in regards to the six neighborhoods. I looked closer at the agenda and I didn't realize that they mentioned the six core neighborhoods in that piece. So yeah, start, start first, please, sorry. Okay. So uh, just an update about the Charter Commission. Uh, we have been meeting for a few months now uh, on the, uh, we're kind of splitting our work into two areas. The first is um, two work groups that'll focus on the main issues that I think most portenders um, are interested in at this point in time. One is the form of government and reviewing and um, looking into different forms of government and ascertaining whether um, there should be a, um, a change to the city of Portland charter to change the uh, commissioner form of government. Uh, so there's a work group now that's gonna be devoted to looking at the forms of government, looking at what has been done in the past and uh, what kind of 
uh, charter changes have been recommended. Uh, of course, those failed in the past, and um, but analyzing those and then um, coming to a consensus about what will be forwarded to, uh, depending on the vote, either directly to the voters or to city council with respect to changing the form of government. Um, so far, um, four of the, uh, well, all the elected officials except for uh, Commissioner Hardesty um, have agreed that there needs to be a change and um, um, we're kind of looking into what that change might look like. Uh, and then um, all the city uh, directors of the different bureaus likewise um, strongly urge that there be some sort of change. Um, next is uh, we also formed a work group on uh, the form of election. And there's been various recommendations that have been made by community members, as well as um, some research that people have done individually on the Charter Commission uh, with respect to maybe having district voting instead of citywide voting for our city council people, uh, perhaps expanding the number of uh, representatives we have on city council. Uh, there's been some discussion about uh, what role the mayor plays vis-a-vis uh, -vis city council members. Uh, right now, Portland has what's called a weak mayoral system, which means that the mayor has pretty much the same authority as all the other city commissioners, um, except for proposing the budget and assigning uh, bureaus. Uh, and, and that's you know certainly very different from um, other cities our size. And so they'll be looking at the voting systems and perhaps also something like ranked choice voting or star voting systems have been put in place as well as to how people vote. So there's, there's quite a bit on that plate as well. Um, hoping to uh, have uh, um, something to put forward by, uh, I believe it's December at this point in time. And um, uh, uh, at that point in time, the Charter Commission will vote. If there's 15 votes on it, it'll go on a ballot in November. Um, if there's less than 15 votes, but 12 votes or more, it'll go to City Council and then City Council has, a, has to approve um, that being sent directly to the, or that being sent to the voters. Uh, and uh, with respect to uh, 110, um, let me see how to phrase it. So, uh, one of the one of the issues that's really affecting um, Portlanders, um, and and this is in, uh, intertwined with um, some of the difficulties in the homeless community, uh, is uh, drug addiction. As I'm sure everybody here is aware, the latest point in time count is uh, showed that 90% of the uh, chronically unhoused. Um, homeless population in Portland uh, has a drug or alcohol um, uh, 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 abuse disorder. And uh, one of the um, recent changes that's been made is uh, passage of 110, which um, decriminalizes uh, small amounts of drugs, including methamphetamines and heroin, something like, I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So yeah, it decriminalizes uh, uh, drugs in general. So um, it, it, it doesn't legitimize it, but it, it's no longer going to be treated as a criminal matter. And the way that the framework works right now is uh, if uh, an individual is found with like, say, methamphetamines, um, that individual is issued what's called a Class E violation. That is not a criminal offense, but there is a $100 fine. And that, um, that can be waived if the individual uh, calls a number. They're given a card with a number saying, call this number and the $100 fine will be waived. There's really no repercussions to not paying the $100 fine, but um, that can be waived if they, if they call the number. So in um, something like the last five months, uh, th this was a presentation by, um, uh, at the, uh, Local Public Safety Coordinating Council, which is a council between the county and the city, involves some of the commissioners, um, some of the public safety officials, the sheriff's office, the, um, the police, uh, as well as the district attorney and, and a host of other people. The presentation noted that in the past five months, there have been something like 1,080 some odd uh, of those Class C citations issued. Um, 
400 people who received those citations just didn't even show up to court. And again, there's really no penalty. The court can do a, a civil penalty, but I don't think that they're really doing that. Um, of the 1,085, uh, they only tracked three people that called that number to waive the $100. And that's very important because when they call that number to waive that $100 fine, they're linked to services. So measure 110 decriminalizes possession, but it's also supposed, supposed to help people um, enter some sort of um, you know, uh, service to help uh, with drug addiction, detox and, and other matters. So uh, there was some discussion about whether that three number actually captured all the people that are calling, um, but that's, that's what they had in a presentation. Um, so that's very troubling um, because I, I really think our homeless population needs to be connected to services. Um, uh, half the people that died on the streets died of overdoses. And, um, and once again, it's a very high percentage of the unhoused chronic population. People have been on the streets for one year or more um, having either alcohol or drug addiction. Um, and on, on top of that, um, of those 1,085 citations that have been issued around the city, uh, around the state of Oregon, I believe only 23 of them, 20 something, I think 23 were issued in Multnomah County. So two things there, our uh, law enforcement here is not really issuing those citations and giving people cards to reach out and get the services. Uh, and also uh, people who are receiving those cards are not calling in to actually get those services. So, um, you know, in, in time, um, I'm, I'm hoping those numbers improve, but what we're seeing right now is, is a pretty dire situation. Um, something like $150 million a year over the next couple of years will, we, will go to providing those uh, drug addiction services uh, and counseling services uh, when people call that number. And if people are not calling that number, um, I, I don't know exactly how uh, there'll be that outreach. So um, we'll, we'll keep on top of that. Anything you want to add, Tiffany? Yeah. Um, before, if, if Scott, do you mind if anybody has any questions about Measure Drug uh, Measure One Ten for Vadim or Charter Reform? Is this okay to ask that, or should we just wait? Because I could go to the next topic, but I'm sure some of you all in the room might have a quick question, or should we just keep going with our report? Tiffany, you're you're running this section of the meeting. I mean, this okay. is your topic, so. Uh, okay. if all right. Well, um, I, we could press forward. Um, if any, take trade, questions, yeah, it's, I'll, we'll take questions. If there's a quick question, if anybody has, um, you could put it in the chat or raise your hand. Otherwise, we could press on forward. Okay, no questions. Uh, Vadim, thank you so much. That's a pretty hearty topic. Uh, PSAC, the public. Safety Action Coalition will be exploring Measure Drug Measure 110 in a little bit more further detail. If you all have interest in that, that's www.pdxpsac.org. It's pretty fascinating and it impacts our communities. Um, the next topic to discuss is the six core neighborhoods. And for all of you who um, haven't been on this call or know what that means as um, the six neighborhoods of downtown, including Goose Hollow Foothills League now shares a monthly Zoom conference call on safety livability concerns um, with our respective neighbors. That's Pearl District, Northwest District, Old Town, Community Association, Downtown Neighborhood Association, Southwest Hills, and Goose Hollow. That's six neighborhoods right there. Uh, we all share that time slot, which has been absolutely great for the last few months because we re quickly realized that we kind of share similar interests and it's better not to work in siloed neighborhoods, but to come together with common meanings and action. Um, this last month, it was the first Wednesday of the month that takes place at 5.30 p.m. The Pearl District hosts it for us. And I, we should say thank you to the Pearl District because that's a lot to put on their plate, but they care about us neighbors. Um, we had guest speakers talking about charter reform. In addition to the Dean Mazursky, who is co-chair currently of the Charter Commission, uh, City Charter Commission, uh, we had Melanie billings Yoon, who's also uh, been appointed to Charter Reform Commission, City, City Commission, and she's actually uh, the president of Swirl, our respective neighbor. So she did a Q&A session with the six neighborhoods. And if you were on that call, it was pretty fantastic. And I forgot to write this down, but I think we had about 
50 something people on that call and it was great and, and and it gives us a chance to explore that topic a little further what it means and i'm not going to go any further on charter reform but after the charter reform discussion we did a round robin with all of the neighborhoods and we said what are the great things that are happening in our neighborhoods and that's where i shared you know goose hollow days and the annual picnic but then we talk about the things that we struggle with in our communities and i'll save um our community our goose hollow report for the committee report but i'll share with you what our respective neighbors concerns are and um they northwest district brought up a good point that right now, if you haven't been paying attention, the Oregon State Legislature is trying to propose redistricting, and that may change up how we are representative. And I really was proud of Rob Fulmer of Northwest District. He said it would be a fantastic idea to propose keeping our six core neighborhoods together under redistricting because we all share common interests in downtown area in the neighboring area. And I thought that was great because can you imagine if we had a different representative saying Goose Hollow than we did in 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 a diff, you know just right just down in the next area the next quadrant? So I thought that was cool of him to pay attention to that. Um, the other concerns were um, uh, Southwest Hills actually put on a um, panel discussion on. Portland homeless crisis. And I thought if any of you have been, were a part of that call, that was fantastic. They had guest speakers, kind of explored the Portland crisis issues. And I was thankful for our Southwest Hills neighborhood to provide that opportunity. And we share these opportunities to talk because the six neighborhoods are concerned about the homeless crisis, especially in downtown. Um, with that being said, tent counts were shared um, among the six core neighborhoods. Goose Hollow's tent count for the month of August was 108 tents, equating to about 200 unsheltered people squatting and living in inhuman conditions on our sidewalks and streets. Uh, Pearl District had 56 tents. Downtown neighborhood had 212, let me look at my note, 218, excuse me. Southwest Hills had 22 tents and uh, Northwest District, they're not quite sure, but I went and looked and eyeballed their tents over there. I think they are comparable to Goose Hollow. So let's give them a hundred. Let, or let's just be real conservative. How about 50 tents? Um, Old Town Chinatown rose up high to 350 tents and Pearl District rose up high to 56 tents. And that includes the North Park blocks. So every one of the quadrants of downtown rose up in tent counts. And collectively, if you add that all together, it came out to about 887 tents without Northwest District. And if you do some uh, estimated math. And by the way, point of doing tent counts is not 100% accurate, but it gives a pretty good indicator of how we can advocate for all of our air, uh, our unsheltered people in Goose Hollow. Pretty darn, pretty darn close. Um, I'd have to say about 1,325 people in downtown alone in our six neighborhoods are unsheltered and need housing. So we should use that data. We provide it to the county and our elected officials so they can think about that, that our neighborhoods are paying attention to our, our houseless neighbors. Um, and I was super proud of the six neighborhoods for providing that. It's hard to do, it's hard to do tent counts, but what we should do is about every four to six weeks to share what's happening in our areas because the weather's gonna change and um, people's needs are gonna change. And I'll talk a little specific about Goose Hollows Unsheltered in a bit. Um, and then in regards to um, the shared six core neighborhoods, uh, Commissioner Dan Ryan was talking about safe sleeping zones he did he did mention around september he would introduce or he would bring out this which six areas have been identified and as you know Goose hollow had two locations but um i don't think i have a feeling that they may not be selected we're not sure yet but in the next three weeks i i heard through the great fine today he'll be um uh, giving out that information, but reality is when I when I did inquire about when Dan Ryan, Commissioner Dan Ryan, was going to uh, does it, uh, specify those six neighborhoods, the reality is we may not get those areas back up uh, up and going until around December. And I'm super worried that when you have those amount of people out there living in the streets, if you bring safe sleep villages up in the month of December, we're already behind the winter storm 
advisory, and we should advocate for people uh, to a safe place prior to December. And that's just my concerns because um, I, as uh, you know, the safety livability, I watched Goose Hollow during the winter storm of um, in around December and February. We had a lot of people out there stuck in the snow. We don't want to do that again. So um, this is kind of on my radar right now coming into fall season. And, th and that's kind of in conclusion of the six core neighborhoods. If you guys are interested in these kind of conversations, uh, please join again next month um, for the monthly uh, Zoom. It's always pretty lively and I really appreciate seeing what's happening in all the other neighborhoods. Oh, and one last thing for the six neighborhoods. Uh, the Pearl District did um, voice a concern. They were holding an art event, their national, their their annual art event. And uh, um, they were worried about in inhumane conditions of um, unsheltered campers on the park blocks um, not being able to provide adequate access for their community event that they rely on. So Old Town Chinatown actually stepped in and helped them with that art event and how to humanely move campers out of the way and, and give them outreach opportunities so the art event could take place, but also humanely deal with people who are living in those conditions right there. Because we all know neighborhoods need to be able to have community events. It's an ecosystem, but we also have to recognize there's people's lives that are attached to that. And we can't just push them over for an art event. We have to humanely take care of them. So um, me personally, and over in Old Town, I reached out with outreach workers and we worked with people, but that is a neighborhood telling the other five neighborhoods, we need help because our city and county did not help them. And we came together offline after that shared livability meeting to talk about how we could come up with strategies to help our own neighborhoods. That's it. Pretty fascinating. Thank you, Tiffany. Is that it for your report? That's it for the under your agenda, the update on say uh, actually. Um, yeah, we're going to mention a little bit about Goose Hollow public safety and transportation under committee reports. Is that OK? But that yeah. was kind of more the the bigger picture of the six neighborhoods and and some more more uh, larger macular views of public safety. Absolutely. So um, question I have is that this uh, joint core meeting, if I remember, was supposed to last like three months. And this was supposed to be kind of a very temporary substitute for our own meeting. So is this just going to be going on forever? What's what's the plan? Great question. And last month, if you all remember, I, I told you we kind of went up to that expiration date. I, I reached out to Pearl District, who's been very mindful about hosting it because these calls take a little longer and it takes it takes, um, you know, takes away from their public safety livability of their own neighborhood. But they recognize how important it is. So um, they said they want to continue to share that platform right now until we get through this hard time. Um, but they may uh, this last month, it took a little bit longer. Longer. Um, but if you've been on the call, it's it's fantastic. And I noticed that Neighbors West Northwest picked up on what the six neighborhoods were doing, and they wanted our our our, our notes from that to share with the broader coalition, um, because you see an, an area working together. So the Pearl District said they want to keep that momentum. We're just debating on whether they uh, we hold it at a different time now, or if we continue forward maybe in, um, for a few more months. Does anyone on this Goose Hollow board feel like we should go back to Goose Hollow and have our own safety livability meeting, or do we should we continue with the six neighborhoods until we until further notice? Well, I, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard any <laughs> problems with it. You know, you, sometimes people will send a, an email to info at goosehollow.org and say, when is the safety and livability committee meeting? And usually I'll just go ahead and forward them to you. But I haven't heard a big uproar from people saying we need our own meeting. But I was curious as to, you know, them extending the number of meetings on this core thing, which I think is great that we work together. But I just wanted to get some clarification on just how long this is going to go on. If anyone wants to message me after the fact or put it in the chat, if they have any concerns or they want to see something different, I would love to see all of your faces at that monthly meeting. It's pretty fantastic. But I understand if you don't have time, um, they do provide minutes after the fact and um, you can. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, let's move to the elections committee. Catherine. Um, let us let us know um, just kind of a brief summary of 
of kind of what the procedure is, is going to be and the, and the timing, just so we're aware? Um, to be totally honest with you, Scott, I'm not entirely sure. Um, we haven't had a chance to connect yet about the um, November elections with last year's committee. Um, that's on my list to do next week. But I can say <laughs> that we um, have had some interest already from the email, which I know you put out on the agenda as well. I actually saw today, I'm out of town right now, but I was checking email and saw today um, that somebody expressed some interest. So we'll be hopping on a phone call and having a conversation about what they're looking for and what we're looking for as well. Um, and then hopefully I'll have some more details and a, a bigger, a stronger sense of dates and things like that uh, coming up in the future. Okay, I I think um, the only kind of timely issue is going to be getting an advertisement in the Northwest Examiner. Um, I don't know who to contact about that. It's always been a very mysterious organization like an Illuminati or something like that. But I think we have to have some sort of advertisement in there um, in time for the uh, October issue. So um, I, I believe we have templates templates for that. And so it, it, we're just trying to make it as easy as possible. But Bridget served in that capacity so um, last year. So she, she should be able so to- So would it be helpful if we forwarded you, because uh, we did kind of revamp the language to be a little more inclusive and welcoming. Um, do you just want me to forward you that? And then you can work, I think, with Alan um, to get that going. Uh, and then Scott did a great synopsis. Um, and I think that's a lot better to follow than my ramblings, but I am here as needed. Yeah, thanks, Bridget. I actually was hoping to reach out to you next week and connect because I think um, a few weeks ago you had also forwarded me um, a bit of information about this as well. So um, we'll connect and get that ball rolling shortly. Okay, good. Well, it's, it's good to uh, hear that there's some interest. Excuse me, I had a question. I a question or a statement. Uh, I know in the past, NWNW would run a monthly um, chart. Now they're only doing it three times a year. We need this ad to run in October and November. So you might have to get in touch with NWNW for them to place a small ad in the Northwest Examiner. We had to go through this last year and they said they were amenable to that because that's in our, more or less our bylaws, we have to publicize it. Okay, good point. Um, all right, uh, any questions? If not, we'll move on to just a quick summary of Goose Hollow Picnic. So um, I, I think I sent an email around about this before, but we had a tremendous response to the Goose Hollow Picnic, which was held on the roof of the new structure at Providence. And we had use of everything there. Um, thanks to um, Eric and to Annie for volunteering to man the welcome table. And we had quite a few people sign up to be new members. Um, you probably saw that list of new members. I think it was like 28 or something like that, but 119 people attended. And I believe that the previous record was like 70. So I would like to keep it going um, next year, hopefully we'll have a good showing for Goose Hollow Days as well, because I, I think people are, are desperate for some personal contact. Mm. Mm. Again, and really want to feel that they're a part of the picnic that I had never seen before and had a chance to talk to a lot of new people. So hopefully we'll just keep it going. Does anybody have any kind of um, uh, comments about what they saw or experienced or kind of hope for doing something like that in the future? Anybody? Hey, this is Tiffany. Um, I That's my first annual picnic and I brought my family. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I'm an idiot. I thought that picnic meant like maybe bring a blanket on their field, but why would we ever get to the, to, you know, have a picnic on that beautiful field, but it's actually upstairs in stadium, you know, the tables and everything. It's pretty, pretty cool. And I, I think next time, I don't know about you guys. I just, I just didn't picture it, you know, annual picnics really more of like an event. So, um, am, am I the only one that probably brought a blanket? <laughs> I hit it. I hit it in my first. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, I'm stupid. Tiffany, I thought it, I, my, yeah. my boyfriend baked cookies. Oh. He also thought it was a picnic. Um, and so it's interesting. I wonder if maybe under we could put some kind of tagline or because picnic, I, I love the idea of it. And 
and but you're right there is a little bit of a disconnect um i don't think it kept people from showing up but you were not alone in that uh, misconception the, yeah the security guard that checked us in right there said no you're you're not gonna get on that grass over there and you're not gonna lay out on it in the sunshine and i was like oh okay <laughs> so okay we'll have a marketing committee kind of rebrand it so that it's no longer a picnic um, if I'm the only one, do not, do, do not change the branding. I just, um, you know, I'm, so. maybe, maybe a beer -thon or something like that. So anyway, thanks. Um, maybe, um, I I'd like to ask the board's permission to write a formal letter on a letterhead, thanking, uh, Providence Park and the Timbers organization and, uh, uh, those folks just, you know, formally, because, you know, if you factor in everything that they gave to us, you know, what they would charge an outside organization is like $6,000. So, you know, it was, it was quite the event. And, um, you know, I, I want to show that we appreciate what they did for us. So with people's approval, I'll go ahead and write that. Is that okay? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of nodded heads. That's fine. I don't think there needs to be a formal motion, but that's, that's just what I'm going to do. So I'll do that in the future. Um, before we move on to the, the, the final bullet point, then the committee reports. Um, Sean, do you want to give us an update on Goose Holidays? Sure. Yeah, I'm happy to give a, a, a good summary for the, for the board here. Um, so we are making progress. And uh, we right now, as of my last count, have uh, 14 uh, confirmed that signed documents and all vendors and entertainers, the net list is growing by the day. Um, I also want to say that, you know, some of you may have already noticed uh, we have some Goose Holidays flyers that are now making their appearances in local coffee shops and grocery stores and places within the neighborhood. And, and big thanks, uh, Scott, to you and Tracy for helping uh, make those flyers a success. Those are really nice and they look great um, everywhere I've seen them. So uh, I'm sure folks are noticing them now and you'll see more. Um, and uh, that, and, and, and honestly, Zion, Zion Melody and, and Pastor Dan have both been just, just phenomenal partners um, in helping us to, uh, you know, use their space and also in providing us like the resources that we think we'll need. Um, and I think we're making good strides. We've got our permitting in place. Um, Bridget, you confirmed that, uh, or I'm sorry, Melody confirmed that the, um, the MAC will be helping to provide the barricades that we need to block off the street. So I know last Last year, we had some issues with uh, cars being parked in certain locations. And so we've, 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 we're in much better shape than we were then. We've got some barricades now and we have the permitting that we need in place. And so that's looking good. Um, yeah, so it's really just now about getting those last, you know, the last sets of vendors and folks together um, to really make us a success. And so we're driving hard towards that first weekend in October. First full weekend of October, I should say. I know the calendar splits, but eight, nine, ten. Great. Sean, Sean, just one question about the barricades. And uh, sure. um, in the past, we've had issues with cars parked on the side of the street. Now, they might be parked there for like three, four, even a week. Mm -hmm. the, you know, putting barricades in those parking spots is not going to do it. So our only option is to ensure that we're allowed to um, tow those cars. Right. Yes. Uh, if we're if it's really needed, because it really constricted kind of the space. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I think I, you might, I might be kind of stuttering here, but, but I'm just, and are, have we confirmed with the city that as long as we use certain sandwich boards and get a certain type of permit that we can call a towing service and have, the, have those cars towed? Yes, we've, we've confirmed that we were able to call a towing service. We still have to pay for said towing service. So the, the objective is to make sure that the signage is in place well enough in advance to deter any, um, any folks from parking there. Um, and then, of course, we'll we'll just slash everybody's tires. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's just a joke. No, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll we will of course use a towing service if we if we have to. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah, but... I can jump in here too. The um, the the folks that were the biggest problem um, two years ago, our last uh, uh, goose holidays, uh, were folks that were storing their cars on the in the neighborhood over the weekend. And so they, they kind of didn't get the message, um, but they, oddly enough, all came from the same organization, a, a business in Goose Hollow. And we've talked to that business. <laughs> that won't be happening this year. 
handled. I like it, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. That's great. That's, all right. So any questions uh, for Sean on Goose Hollow Days or how you can become a member of the committee, um, how you can sign up to sing at, in the entertainment booth, anybody? Janet, I see your hand raised. I know you want to do it. Also, uh, <laughs> hey, Scott, yeah. we did have a, a request from Melody. We are looking for an MC for the event. And it's someone that is not only a bright personality, but can keep track of things like the raffle um, and kind of keep the show on the road. So if anyone comes to mind uh, that is free October 9th and uh, has the discipline and pizzazz, um, let us know. Okay, will do. Tiffany? I'm not looking to MC that. Uh um, Jerry, I need Toastmasters. Thank you. Um, definitely don't need that, that MC moment. Um, I just wanted to let you know, Scott printed out some Goose Hollow flyers for me. Uh, I think, was it 200, I think? And the backside of it had Goose Hollow demographics, but on the front side, it talked a little bit about Goose Hollow Days, the annual picnic and safety livability meetings. And um, I passed them out for a couple hours, like a good handful of them. Um, and then I have to give a special thank you out to Rachel over at Goose Hollow Inn. I think she handed out over a hundred of those flyers. So door to door businesses and what have you. And I can't, and, and that was in lieu of our postcard that we were hoping for, um, to get the message out because we need more Goose Hollow membership and we all, and we need to know to connect with the community and not everybody's on next door. Not everybody's going to see that little goose hollow posted up on the, on the polls and what have you. So we went door to door and I thought that was fantastic this year. So I'd like to do a little bit more of that um, to engage the community that's offline. And, and Scott, I saw Janet speaking, but I think she was on mute. Uh, Janet, uh, we didn't hear you. I think she was going to volunteer. That's why she wanted to go off mute. Still unmute. I don't know how to unmute that. I'll get on it. Uh, there we go. I would be glad. Are you hearing me? Yes. Are you hearing me? Okay. I'd be glad to sit at a table. I'm not going <laughs> to stand up and, you know, tell who won the raffle. But anyway, I'd be glad to do that. So who do I talk to about that? Can you hear oh, me? Sean. Yeah. Go ahead and talk yeah. to Sean. Janet, yeah, we'll be I'll in touch. To Sean? That's right. I get you my Sean, contact info, Janet. Yeah, would you send me your contact information? Absolutely. I'll I'll um I'll I'll send you over a direct message now over Zoom. Great. All right. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Let's let's move to the next topic. Uh, this is a discussion of board decorum. Um, I've given a lot of thought to this, and I'm sure all of you have too. You know, I've been uh, working as part of the you know, neighborhood volunteering and stuff for probably close to 15 years. And I've seen a lot of stuff happen, both good and bad. And the thing that I realize is that, you know, everybody who's on this call loves the neighborhood and wants to make it better. You know, I have a lot of confidence in all of you. I'm very optimistic of the direction of the neighborhood. Um, I see the best in people. Um, and I know that we each live very busy lives and that, that we're volunteers and we want to feel that um, what we do matters and the time that we put in and the energy that we put in matters and it goes toward good. And there's, there are certain ways that, you know, we can hope to behave. And I know a lot of you wish that you could take some things back differently. People are human. And I recognize that people make mistakes and, uh, you know, we ask for forgiveness. And I know, you know, with, with that in mind, I, I just want to let everybody know that I appreciate everything that everybody on this call, everybody on this call has done for this neighborhood. Um, you know, with, with that said, you know, keep in mind that especially as, as members of the board that we're essentially ambassadors for this neighborhood and um, we need to be, you know, the best version of ourselves and um, we need to make sure that, you know, every time that we interact with people that we are representing the neighborhood and ourselves and the board in the best possible light. And I know all of you feel that way and um, that, 
you know, if, if things were said in the past that you want to take back, that you feel some some uh, some guilt about it, and that uh, you've given uh, some apology. And and I know that you know this is very specific to a particular circumstance that's happened in the past month, month and a half. And I know we're going. going to be discussing that, but I want you all to know, you know, straightforward discussion about this if you would like to, but um, I, I want people to be very respectful of each other and, and know that we all believe that the neighborhood, um, that we have things to accomplish in the neighborhood, and that things like this are a distraction that takes away from all the good works that we do um in the neighborhood so it, the the final thing that i want to say is that i was at my daughter's convocation at stanford and the president of the university stood up and in addition to saying a lot of stuff about ted lasso i don't know if you guys have watched the ted lasso thing but it's like this amazing phenomenon and i think it's because it has such a positive message that even kind of the most negative characters have you can see their good heart in in the way that they behave and you come away feeling that that not only is there good in this world but that we can be optimistic about the future and he said something the president said something that um i've heard uh, a hundred if not a thousand times before and when he said it when the president of stanford university said it i looked at tracy and we both like shook our head like where have i heard that before and it is this, and I'm sure you've heard it too. It is, it is okay to disagree without being disagreeable. And I think we should hold that as a tenant of our organization that we're gonna not all agree on everything, not amongst ourselves, not amongst the neighbors, but, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we, that we um, uh, behaviors and be disagreeable. I think we're better than that and we, we should act better than that. So with that, I'll just open up the discussion for people. Um, Eric? You know, it's, it's very nice what you said. I look at it that actions have consequences in this particular email, and I'll only refer to this individual as a board member uh he crossed the line uh there were potential violations of duty of loyalty that i think needs to be discussed emails had gone out originally i had spoken with tiffany and vadim then reached out to you to settle this in a amicable manner and what i just like to say and it'll take me about three minutes to go through this and i'll have my say and then you can go on from there the GHFL will have abrogated its responsibility to the Goose Hollow community if they do not deal with this issue in a forthright manner. The following emails have been submitted to the GHFL board for resolution by a current GHFL board member. I quote the first email, you should be ashamed of your testimony today. How dare you invoke Michelle's horrific dog accident as an argument against livability in this community. I'll make sure Michelle knows this. People and dogs are only going to be more at risk of accidents if there is more traffic without the requisite infrastructure upgrades Peabot isn't supporting. That's all appropriate in manner and tone. He then goes on. You are not welcome at any GHFL meetings going forward, and you are not welcome within Goose Hollow. Please remove yourself from any further engagement with this community. That's the rub. He issued an apology on uh, the 18th, 13 days later. I heard there was some concern over my previous email and I apologize for any inference that I could ban you from the GHFL. I cannot ban nor censure you in any GHFL activity, nor would I want to. In the heat of the moment, I use GHFL instead of FOGH, Friends of Goose Hollow, which is an organization where your perspectives are unwelcome. Please don't use our neighbor's dog death as an argument to bring 400 more cars to our block. I encourage you to reach out to me directly if you have any future concerns or questions. 
he answers the question in terms of taking, he, he cannot ban her from going to a GHFL meeting. He didn't address the issue of saying, you are not welcome within Goose Hollow and please remove yourself from any further engagement with this community. That is the now the position of the GHFL, unless we have him apologize or issue a statement that we that what he said is not our position. Further, when he uh, did his second apology, which came out a few days ago, I'd like to offer my apology for a mistaken overstep in my communication with the member of the community on 8-5 that imposed my opinion over top my role on the GHL board. On 8-18, I reached out to the community member to clarify and offer my apology for my miscommunication. In that apology, I was clear to absolve the GHFL from any implication with my opinion. I regret this overstep and above all, am remorseful for the time spent on this matter that should have been uh, better spent on issues important to our community. To me, that's a baby step. He still hasn't addressed the main issues. There's a thing that would be known as a true apology. And a true apology has three main components. It acknowledges the actions taken and the resulting pain inflicted on you or an organization. It provides an action plan for how he or she will right the wrong and there is an actual change in behavior proving there won't be a repeat of the past. Have those been met by the apologies submitted that, well, to our board, the last one? I don't believe so. And originally I was gonna request a few motions, but I would like to quote, uh, and this was from uh, in the archives of the Goose Hollow Foothills League. And it says, I quote, people have told me that they are afraid to speak up because they fear being targeted and fear the stream of hostility being focused on them. This unprofessional and unkind behavior puts our organization at legal risk and is repugnant. Time has shown that we can't ignore it and hope that it will go away. We each have the obligation to call out intimidation and unkind behavior when we see it. See it. Excuse me. I hope that the next board will feel empowered to create an environment of mutual respect and learning to disagree without being disagreeable. That was said by our previous president, Tracy Prince, at her 2020 GHFL president's report. And I, you know, it's open discussion right now, but I'd really like to hear what Sean has to say and if he feels that the apology that he gave to this board is appropriate. Thank you. Sure. So happy, happy to to respond, Eric. Um, you know, I I certainly provided my my clarifications to the the injured party within the community, and certainly stated my positions with. The board um, earlier, so um, I would think that my apology is sufficient. But I'm happy to entertain further discussion if there's concerns that it's not. Um, I think it was clear in my apology both to the injured party and to this board that there were some lessons learned from there. So I think that does satisfy your your condition of ensuring that there's a recognition of the the errant behavior and an intent to improve. Um, and I also think that um, by by addressing the miscommunication and and clarifying that it, it made a, a a stance that was clearly one driven by an opinion and not one by this board, which I certainly would not you know, and I regret to invoke that, and certainly wouldn't want to continue to invoke that. Um, so you know, I just want to make sure that those those positions are clear, and um, you know, I, I do appreciate your concerns. I think I want to make sure that you know. Like everybody on this board, that we are, are an equitable and fair body and, and representative of everyone within Goose Hollow, and I think that's that's critical. So um, that that's those are those are my thoughts. I, I do do appreciate the dialogue. Well, uh, can I move that the board accept Sean's statement as written, or is there more discussion? Tiffany Hammer here. Um, I I appreciate this conversation. I agree with transparency. 
we're all in this together. We represent the community. I like, I, I appreciate this conversation. I think we're handling it pr pretty well um, and moving, let's quickly move forward. But my, my, uh, just as a gentle reminder to all of us that are uh, representative of our community that if we do go to testify or speak on behalf of Goose Hollow Foot Hills League, that we follow the, 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 the code and the bylaws and also be aware that we represent the community and I think we'll be just fine. We got we have lots to learn here, lots to grow from and I'm actually pretty proud of this group here because it's been a great year and I would like to continue that momentum. Um, we're going to have moments like this but opening this up in this platform is our best bet at this point and I do suggest before we do a motion let's ask anybody in our community if they've been how do they feel about this moment moment of transparency and if anybody in the community who's in this meeting how they feel before we pass the motion is that is that fair um, because I want to make sure that our our people that are watching us give us their feedback as well and if our community um, does not want to speak it's okay <laughs> and I don't want to put anybody um that's not on the board on the spot or anything like that. You could put it in the chat, you could write us a message or you could speak up. And if you don't have anything to say, that's great. That's fine too. If, if no one else has anything to say, I don't know if Janet's trying to turn off the mute or anything, no. Um, Scott, just a clarification question. Was there ever any kind of grievance or anything filed by the individual that received the email to your knowledge? No, I haven't received. Um, any grievance from the uh, subject of the email. Okay, well, we have a motion before us. Um, uh, I want to second that motion. Um, I, I believe that there's been two uh, attempts to reconcile what the actions were taken. And I take Sean at his word that um, there's contrition here. On top of that, I would also offer from what Tiffany told me there's Neighbors West Northwest has some sort of series of lectures or training that individuals can take as to um, decorum and treating other people. So um, I, I do offer that, not, not as an amendment to that motion, but as a um, possibility for people to learn from this experience as well. Um, I, I, Scott did mention that, um, you know, we, we need to read the best intentions possible. And not only do I read it, um, you know, as, as a heat of the moment, but also I, I read the uh, two attempts at this point to both uh, absolve the Goose Hollow Foothill League from the statements that were made, but also um, a, a regret from making those statements um, and um, having not actually uh, received a grievance from the individual um, I, I'm loath to, uh, you know, not accept uh, the, the apology as it was written and um, discussed today. So I second that. Okay, motion is on the table. Uh, discussion. I have a few things to say. Um, I don't believe this is heartfelt. I don't think it's addressed the entire issue. Um, in addition, th there's been no public statement. He sent us an email. Will he say this? at the next meeting, perhaps, if the apology is accepted. Um, I also look at it that I believe that we as a board must also disavow the statements made by the GHFL member. As an example, the GF GHFL board does not understand or support the claims made in the original email. In addition, the current board was not aware of these emails or testimony or their claims and therefore does not support them. Uh, I am just amazed and I'd like to hear from uh, other board members. Um, to me, this is incredibly egregious. And because you say a complaint has not been filed, in my view, this is a violation of duty of loyalty of how a representative is supposed to act. Actions, you know, have consequences. In, in addition to all of this, uh, I, I'm just amazed that this was not addressed in the previous emails among other board members where we could have come up with a complete resolution here at this meeting. And um, I'm just very disappointed. In addition, anyone 
anyone, a board member, a private citizen, anyone who's now on this email, on this um, call, has 45 days when they get notice or become aware of a violation. It doesn't have to be the individuals involved. If you've noticed, I did not bring up whether he should um, apologize to the woman that he maligned or demeaned. That's between him and her. My only concern is the actions that this has on the reputation of the Goose Hollow Foothills Board. I've been involved in two situations, not as not nearly similar or identical. And I'll tell you, I sent something to the Department of Justice uh, to get an inquiry, and I signed my name, and then I put down uh, that I was a member of NWNW and the Goose Hollow Foothills uh, Board. And NWNW got notification of it. They got very angry at me. They brought me up at one of their meetings. I was a representative at that, at that time. I, they handed out the letter. Most of the board members, once they read it, saying, oh, you can tell right away, this was written by an individual, not as a group. I did a mea culpa. I said, the lesson I learned from this, only sign my name and make sure I'm only doing it as an individual. The apology was accepted. We moved on. Later on, also with Neighbors West Northwest, there was the president at the time, who was also president of uh, Downtown Neighborhood Association, who maligned the Goose Hollow Foothills League on a continuing basis. And the two representatives, which were myself and another individual. We brought up, it took about three, four months to get them to issue an apology, not just to us, but to the Goose Hollow board. The next president did the same thing, and we were able to get an apology out of them. So actions have consequences. And I, and Sean, I don't know you from Adam. We don't meet pretty much when the board is not here. The previous boards, pre-COVID, you had a chance to socialize. So from my perspective, I don't know who you are, and to a large degree, I don't care. I consider this to be an incredibly egregious uh, misstep. I don't believe your apology is enough. Uh, the option that either I or any other board member here is to go and file a violation of duty of loyalty. And then we'll go through whatever that process is. But I'd like to hear from other board members who have not spoken up on this to see what their feelings are. Eric, a uh, oh, quick question. So uh, two questions, actually. Um, one, you noted something about um, whether the board knew of this ahead of time as being important earlier on in your statement. Do you have any reason to believe that anybody in this board knew about the statement ahead of time? You're on I there. understand that, but I'm saying when we found out, Tiffany was the first one who found out about this. She notified Scott. Tiffany notified me. I notified you. We were working to come up with some kind of template that we could present to the board, get additional feedback, and have this all resolved before this meeting. Eric, I, I, yes, I came to you several times and I asked what kind of template you wanted to and you would not give it. So I don't understand oh, well, why you're saying that, it's inadequate at this point in time. That is not true. I told oh, well. you I told you he was a grown man. He doesn't need my input on coming up with an apology. The one that he had was unacceptable. I sent out several emails to you and Tiffany and the entire board that stated what possible remedies were. That was a starting point. You did not add to it. It's also interesting that Tiffany also requested that this be put on the agenda. And again, when Scott got the information, when he responded, he got misinformation from um, Mark Sieber at NWNW, whether it was misinformation, disinformation, who knows. But the advice that he gave Scott was totally inaccurate. And again, you as a board will do what you do. I'm curious what the board members who have not spoken up on this feel. I know what your views are. Yeah, I didn't, thank you. I just wanted to clarify that there was an opportunity for you to say in which way the statement was lacking that was not taken up 
And now again, you're saying it's 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 lacking and it's kind of hard to understand it's exactly not, in what ways it's lacking. Excuse me, Vadim, it's not my responsibility to come up with an apology for him. I could give you an apology right off my head right now, which will be which would be much more appropriate than what he's done. So it, again, you could have offered some assistance in that as well. So don't put the onus on me. I tried with you as well as with Tiffany to bring this and to Scott and then Bridget to bring it to the attention of the board to discuss. It was ignored. You will vote the way you're going to vote and I'll vote the way I'm going to vote. And then there are- just let the other board members talk? I mean, this is monopolizing our time. Um, obviously people are heated. Fine, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I think, um, I mean, this is supposed to be an open discussion, but there's no requirement that um, any board member ex explain themselves to Eric. If they choose not to say anything, then we'll just move on to a vote. Uh, Tiffany here, I, once again, this situation is out in the open, so we all could talk about it and we can move forward. And there's a, some actions that have taken place. Uh, both Scott and I reached out to NWNW and uh, Reese has provided uh, options where uh, any of the board members would like to participate in the September 30th training to learn more about these type of situations. Um, I am a firm believer that we're all, uh, we're all good people and these are experiences or situations that we need to learn from. And I think we've addressed that already. And I do appreciate allowing Eric to talk because not everybody, just like our community, will feel a certain way. So we have to allow people that uh, to be heard and that we have to allow people to heal. And so I'm, 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 I'm okay with this and I'm ready to move forward with a motion if that's okay. Because I think that we saw, I think three apologies, right? To the person in the community, to the board, and in a second apology to the, how many, how many apologies was it? The two or three, I'm sorry. To, uh, sorry, Catherine, I can't see your fingers. Yep, two. Okay. And we also reached out to NWMW. And there is a training offered and we offered transparency. We ask our public how they feel about this. They have the opportunity for 45 days to let us know because um, we are representatives of the community. So shall we move forward with a motion? Um, motions, motions on the table. It's just a matter of, of the vote. So okay. without further discussion, um, all in favor of the motion, raise your hands. And all opposed? Opposed. Eric? Yeah. Opposed. Okay. All right. The, the motion passes to accept the apology. Um, I, I suspect we'll be treating this as a learning moment. Um, and, um, you know, it's not to say that things like this won't happen in the future. I mean, you know, let's, let's be frank. There are certain things that are triggers, and especially after quarantining for so long, <laughs> sometimes it's difficult to remember how to treat each other. But um, again, I just want to reiterate, I, I respect each and every one of you and I, I believe in you and your ability to serve on the board. So thank you for continuing to do so. Anything else on this topic? Okay, um, Tiffany, let's go ahead and move to, to just kind of wrap up on the public safety parking and transportation. Great. Uh, Tiffany Hammer and uh, Vadim, I'll take this one because it's more uh, the uh, uh, Goose Hollow neighborhood specifically. Um, in the month of uh, this last month, we had a solve cleanup on September 15th. We went through the span with volunteers along the 405 corridor and our Goose Hollow area to make it cleaner. Um, and we had a great turnout. And I have to say, say thank you to the adoptive blockers out there. I'm not sure who they are, where they are, what they do, but you know what, every little bit helps. And oh, there we go. There's an adopter blocker there. Um, I participated September 15th with Vadim Mazursky. I believe my title is ambassador. Ooh, fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, fantastic. Um, and when uh, just a specific highlight to the solve cleanup, um, I well over 100 needles were picked up off of our sidewalks. And there was a um, fire over there by PSU that burnt down our trees and our vegetation. And sadly, the city failed to clean up that fire damage and all the debris and the plastic and the, and it looked like a campment that went up in flames. And our solve volunteers cleaned that 
that up. And it was about a month it was sitting there. And um, these are the things that really impact our community. So I want to say thank you to Solve. Um, once a month, our Solve volunteers come together. It's the third week of the month. Reach out to me if you're not sure when that is and if you'd like to be involved. I would like to see a little bit more Goose Hollow faces. Um, I saw a new piece of faces um, from Northwest District wanting to help out Goose Hollow. And I'm like, yay, there's our neighbors again. Um, as, as mentioned earlier, there are 108 tents in Goose Hollow. Scott, for the record, document that we are up a lot. And I would, I'm kind of seeing where we go from here. Um, I reached out, I was a part of the Goose Hollow um, safety call with Sam Adams, who works under Mayor Wheeler on safety, livability, and sanitation concerns. And I told him about the 108 tents and that averaging 200 people. Um, there's about six tents along the mid core of Goose Hollow and the rest are on the 405 corridor and Highway 26 and around our residential homes. And what I noticed was they weren't getting outreach, the helping hand up from the city or the county. Um, we were kind of getting left behind. So I told Sam Adams that we need to have the Huckert team come out periodically just to show our community that that's, they are offering the, the resources. And if we don't see that, I reached out to Street Roots to uh, maybe use some of our bottle drop money to offer up a day of outreach help. That's where we can get some ambassadors out there. I could show them where the tents are, ask them if they want a shelter or some kind of resources, but we can't just allow people to be out there without the helping hand. So I'd like to, in the next 30 days, come back to with a report if that is even helpful. And if they deny the helping hand, at least we know our community is doing some work. Um, the inner core of Goose Hollow now has a private security consortium started back in April. It's highly successful. It's providing private security, but also outreach. So if anyone is, um, and unsheltered and in that area and they need help, they are offered that help as well. Pacific echelon has been um, instrumental along um, as well as myself looking at people that may need help um, on the streets right there. That's relocation and what have you. So if you see them, see that team of folks, I think if you went to the annual picnic, you met Mariah. Uh, Mariah is one of the uh, private security guards that takes care of Goose Hollow. And I was I brought her there to the annual picnic so you can meet someone that works there. The grid is 16 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, the couple concerns that were brought up in the neighborhood, um, besides unsheltered camping and, and the residents of the neighborhood have um, brought up concerns about shootings. We're now having shootings. Uh, off of 13th and Goose Hollow, we had a man shot in the abdomen and it, and I'm, we're not sure because we're not investigators, but it looked drug drug related and by a homeless tent. Um, the other um, shooting was off of Montgomery, and we I never heard back from it, um, of what the cause of that was. But commit, members of the community are now voicing concerns they can hear shooting. That's actually with the six neighborhoods, it's a trend right now. So as you saw, I forgot to tell you, Pearl District had an active shooting situation and during day hours, we're starting to see shootings at night and during the day. Goose Hollow hasn't had it in the day. It's been in the night, um, but we're watching it. Uh, residents also reported fires. We had one last week again, and I think it was off of Clay Street. Forgive me. We have a fire every 10 days now, and they burn our vegetation and our trees, and they're close to our homes, and they are of concern to your residents here in Goose Hollow. Other ones are assaults, um, break-ins, unwanted visitors. And so I let Sam Adams know that our residents are concerned with these things. Um, sadly, I met with Mike Schmidt of the head of the DA that these type of cases just aren't getting prosecuted right now. They're just not getting any, there's many reasons why they're not um, because we just don't have police, enough police response, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but one of the things was the lack of probation um, services that we're seeing in the community. So I got a, an email today that um, I reached out and said, hey, it looks like we have people who are been from, uh, sh who are on probation in Goose Hollow that probably need a little bit extra monitoring. Um, and they said that because of COVID, uh, probation officers were only using the phone to call people who are on probation who are maybe living in tents in along Goose Hollow because I started finding people who are on probation. And they said that they have a now a mobile van 
about eight weeks ago, they bought a couple mobile vans and I would like to get it into Goose Hollow. I want those people to get connected if they're on probation in Goose Hollow, because that's a form of safety for Goose Hollow. Um, the other concern too for safety with Sam Adams is this, the Timber Stadium had a serial graffiti person who was going up to the stadium, who had a, um, I think a social media platform, but was uh, graffitiing the front and the sides of the, the building and the sidewalks with hatred. And they, and they worked with police because this person was continuously coming back to our neighborhood and defacing um, one of our focal points in our neighborhood. And so that was a big issue. And uh, the stadium would try to clean it up really quickly, but it was costing a lot of money. And it was um, making a lot of the residents in the area uncomfortable with seeing that kind of a graffiti. But it looks like that person was dealt with um, from Matt Jacobson, our, our um, Sergeant of Police for Central Precinct. So that is a good thing, right? It just took a while. Um, we already mentioned that uh, moving on, um, Neighbors West Northwest holds all kinds of diversity training, education trainings for our neighborhood associations. The next one, September 30th, please go to their website. Um, and let's see, I think that, oh, last of all, transportation and parking. Um, we got an email from a, a, a person in the community that was worried about a noise concerns with um, the trash trucks and what have you. Uh, between Doug, myself, we reached out to, um, uh, sorry, someone's texting right here on the chat. Um, I reached out to that person in the committee worried about the sounds of a trash truck at 4.30 in the morning in Goose Hollow. So um, we're looking to hear back from this person in the community after we provided some suggestions. So um, once again, Goose Hollow Neighborhood Association reaches out to our public, whatever um, needs they have, they, we are the board. We can follow through with those things to see what we can do to remedy those situations. Um, zone B parking. Um, I have to say, I, I had some problems with zone B parking online this month, and I've had a lot of choice words with the online parking. It's online now, um, but the lag time, the, the website was lagging, and I dealt with a parking person and trying to get license plates uploaded to the website. I I don't know about all of you guys, but um, that system became an issue. And I think what in the parking forcer person that goes around giving you those expensive tickets said um, the paper tickets, those little daily scratches or whatever, um, weren't accessible. And then the online system was actually not available till after September 6th. So anyone who was trying to get a parking pass temporary, or whatever was having problems. So I just put note on my car, on my cars, you know, when I was um, working or there, or what have you and said, please don't give me a ticket. Um, so I'm hoping that the system remedied itself after September 6th. Has anybody else on this board had problems with the online zone B parking? No? Okay. Um, I saw a few people on Nextdoor talking about it and I just, and I think, uh, let's see, Jerry, you've been a fantastic on Nextdoor redirecting people to our committee about parking concerns. So other than that, um, I think that I covered everything. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, love the work that you're doing as part of the committee and thank you, Vadim. Um, I think we've had a report on Goose Hollow Days, uh, stadium oversight, Committee, I don't know if there's anything new to report. Jerry, anything new on that? No, the the um, the uh, stadium oversight committee will be meeting toward the end of October. Uh, that's the best information I've got. Okay. I have seen uh, uh, some concerns from the uh, from the uh, area M parking area, um, which is across uh, Burnside. It's, it's, it's the parking area that, that is sort of coincides with, with the alphabet district. And, you know, they have an active um, um, committee that, that is specific to their, uh, to their concerns. And I haven't heard anything from that committee either. So, um, we'll see. It's it's a new uh, a new year for for uh, the Timbers folks for the fans anyway. The many of them uh, 
over the last year kind of forgot the the habit that they had of of uh, avoiding parking in the in the immediate vicinity of the stadium and it's going to take some some effort by the timbers to to uh, get them back on track well it's nice to hear the fans cheering again <laughs> yes yeah it's it's actually cool we sit in our living room and um, we'll hear kind of the roar of the crowd and we know something good has happened. So uh, it makes me feel better to hear that. People are, are cheering again for something. Yeah, that second, uh, second goal last, uh, uh, last Sunday was, was pretty amazing. <laughs> got the wrong reaction. Uh, yes, I sent out a notification about, speaking of parking and other issues, I sent out a notification on October, about the October 3rd in the Portland Marathon. What they're saying is um, it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning and it'll only impact Goose Hollow like about till 8.15. Now, that, I think that's not a guarantee, but it'll be very early in the morning on Sunday, October 3rd. And also mm -hmm. it has some parking, is, you know, they're taking over some parking. And they say they will take down any barricades as the event progresses. So when they said that, I couldn't anticipate any uh, real problems. Um, so there, but you might, if you're up at eight o'clock on Sunday, October 3rd, then you'll run across something going, you know, there'll be some distractions going on. Yeah, well, thank you for dealing with that. And um, are, are you also the one that is looking into the fuel truck issue? Uh, yeah, um, I haven't officially, I mean, contacted too many people. I've only seen one other fuel truck since the other one. This is the third time. Um, the, the second one was going so fast down the hill. He was, uh, he must have seen the light at the bottom on 18th and just gunned it. Because when I saw it, that's, he was, was must have been moving 45. 50, which is really fast for a big truck like that. But it has a, for those of you who want to know, it has, a, it has a faded Jackson sign stencil on it, which is the same as the previous one. And so you did have a call. Did you have a call in to Cal about that, uh, Scott? No, I, I just sent him an email. I haven't called him about it, but I think I sent you his response. If not, then I'll do it again. But he, he, he seems to remember that there was, certain people with the city that he dealt with. Um, and then Tiffany, I think you had mentioned that those names had changed. Maybe I'm misremembering. No, I would expect um, So, yeah. but they were able to successfully take care of it. Um, and I, I believe they contacted the companies directly um, and read them the they, right act, or at least read them the particular sections of the statute that they're not following, so. Of course, I'm, I'm interested in why they're coming down uh, a surface street instead of I-405 and getting out, getting out to Highway 26 that way. And I don't know why they're, they're the, the number of gas stations around that they could be supplying is pretty limited these days. You know, there's one on 4th, there used to be one on Burnside. So I, I don't know why they'd be coming down, or why they're trying to get away with it if they are. So. Um, right, well, they, um, I think we can't, can't go through I, the tunnel. Hi there, Scott. I could jump in for a for a moment. You know, the the person to contact is the district engineer for the, for ODOT, the yeah, okay. Oregon Dis, uh, Department of, of Transportation. The um, they provided us the the best handle that, that we ever had on those uh, trucks. They're avoiding the tunnel, which is a good thing. Uh, but the reason that they're using uh, Jefferson Street is it's simply economic. Uh, the alternative is that they take um, uh, 217 down to I-5 uh, I and then back up I-5 to get to 26. So um, the uh, ODOT was pretty effective in, in uh, threatening them. Uh, and pretty much ending the practice. Uh, these guys are 
flouting the law. They know it. Uh, their dispatchers know it. And they respond pretty quickly to ODOT. Yeah, we're not going to have any impact on them by ourselves. Okay. So I should, uh, I should implement a contact uh, and talk to the chief engineer of ODOT about that. And they have all the lists of all the companies. It's actually, it's actually the district engineer. And I believe it's the, the, um, oh, darn, I don't remember the name of the district, but. Um, it's district one, uh, and it's an old town, Chinatown. Um, I know that district, it's uh, Theodore, Ted Miller, ODOT. And he's in charge of that that area, tra the transportation area, last I checked. And Doug, by the way, when you mentioned the fuel trucks, um, this month I saw a, no joke, mo the most largest car transporter coming through a Hall Street and getting stuck in our trees and everything. So I'm thinking that Portland's pretty lawless right now and anything goes, and I don't know who's going to cite them because we don't cite drugs. We don't cite anything. And we don't, we don't even have a transport. We don't have a traffic, hardly well, a traffic I division with these two. I, like, I think Bridget will have something to say about car transporters coming down Jefferson yeah. from Grand Prix Automotive, one of your competitors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they got, you know. Well, maybe theirs is well, the one that gets stuck great in cars, though. In their defense, damn, yes. those are nice. Those are nice cars. Porsche cars. Um, but I do have a question, because um, Doug and I have seen each other in the neighborhood, and some of the cars that come zipping down Columbia, and I understand this is a low action item, who do I nag incessantly to get speed bumps? How do I do that? I was thinking I could, we, we at least need a, the, the speed limit is 25 miles an hour. I looked it up on the map. And uh, so at least we can get one on Jefferson Columbia, the speed speed signs. We should look at that. And I don't know who it is. There okay, so I'll just look up the city site and maybe I'll just email you, Doug, and we can at least uh, get something okay. going. Okay. Yeah, but, the, and we, but we really want a speed bumps, but there's issues with that. <laughs> Hey, That'll stop them. Uh, hey, Doug. <laughs> Jerry's I, laughing. No, why, Jerry? It's kind of an evil laugh, too. <laughs> is, is it Peabot? It's the Nightmarish Peabot. Um, hey, Doug, just a heads up on the Portland Marathon. I got an email from the Tibber Stadium. They said that they're actually actually not a, a um, actually a part of the Portland Marathon, which goes right past them. But they said that, that it significantly impacts their staff and players arrivals in their game, which is actually at three o'clock with gates opening at one thirty. So you're going to see a collision course of a game and a marathon. They well, said that yeah. in the past they would use the police bureau, um, but they don't have enough officers to staff this event. So they're going to rely on the marathon volunteers to help crowd control well the so. marathon the marathon shouldn't last that late it's only can it possibly last more than two hours and that starts at eight o'clock in the morning good so, point uh, maybe they're just yeah. whining yeah well it's possible because there's parking um they if they promised me they clear it up and the, the parking uh sandwich signs and all that they clear that all up and they you know so if they do they do and no, and no barricades, you know. Yeah, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the the uh, the trucks on Jefferson uh, issue, ODOT wasn't so so concerned about trucks on Jefferson because it actually is part of of uh, US twenty six. But when they were taking eighteenth across to Salmon Street and going past the high school, they got really ex uh, excited. The um, the trucks are not supposed to be in the neighborhood, and ODOT can lift their transportation permit. So if you're wondering what you know how the the uh, you know how enforcement works, you know without that transportation permit, they're not they're not in business anymore. Yeah. So. Uh, of course, I haven't seen anybody coming across from Burnside side to on, on 18th. 18th's a mess anyway. They, I, I can't see them taking a big truck like that, do they, doing that? Except the car transporters who get stuck and go the wrong direction and head up toward Clay. And 
they were stuck in the middle of the intersection on Columbia one morning. It was crazy. So I'll get in contact with that. Uh, Tiffany, what was that name again, Ted? Ted Miller. Uh, Ted Miller. And I think his email is Theodore Miller, you know, theodore.miller at O. Uh, and he he oversees those kind of I mean and if he doesn't control this piece I'm sure he'll get you straight to the he's just been sitting in on a lot of our meetings in downtown and he's very involved and um, open-minded so I think I'd start there first and, and and think that you'll get somewhere okay all right um, so uh, with that, let's go to planning and zoning. It's very, very quick. We've already talked about block seven and Madera Main, but I noticed when I was putting together the agenda and went on the uh, design commission hearing website to see what was being presented on the, on September 23rd and in what order the block seven project was being presented, that there's another Goose Hollow project on the agenda. And that is something that we've heard about, but still don't have any real information about what it's going to look like. And that is an eight story project on Market Street around between 15th and 16th. So just down the street from us, um, it, it currently is a parking lot and has uh, what looks to be kind of like a mobile home on stilts, which is a, an office building. So there's not a whole lot there right now. Um, I guess the advantage is that it's just gonna mean more eyes on the street um, along, that, along that street, which could be a, um, you know, a little chancy, I guess. But uh, as soon as we know more information, we'll say it. And I think Jerry, you and I should probably reach out to the developer to have them present to a planning committee so that we can find out more about the project. Yes, yeah, Scott, the, they're required to anyway. The, it's, uh, it's an RM3 design zone. And it's a, uh, it'll be a type three review uh, in front of the design commission. Yeah. Um, now they're required to do a neighborhood contact uh, uh, within a couple of months before they actually go to the design commission. So it strikes me that they're a little bit behind the, the eight ball right now. Um, it, uh, it's a project that the city is going to really want. It's, it's designed as a quote, affordable housing, unquote. Um, there are some issues there with respect to the, the inclusive housing uh, uh, provisions in the zoning code. Um, I'm a little nervous about the, the, uh, the way they're, they're permitting the, the project or the, the way they're asking the city to, to permit it. I got uh, the, the um, uh, uh, advanced notes from from the from their their meeting with with uh, with the the uh, development um, the bureau of development uh, yes yeah um, and it it looks like they've got like three pages of of stuff that the planning was really concerned about so. Uh, I think it's something that we have to be uh, concerned about, but uh, probably not something that we need to be alarmed about. All right, well, let's get them in sooner rather than later. So anyway, I'm sure you'll see that on the agenda in the future and, and we'll be tracking it. Um, finally, moving to Neighbors West, Northwest, um, I was able to go to the July meeting. Tiffany, you went to the August meeting. Uh, Vadim went to the September meeting and we probably all found that there's um, some weird stuff going on in the coalition. Um, there was, there's supposed to be a strategic plan. They're, they're undergoing a strategic plan, but you may have read in the Northwest Examiner that there's a disruption to that. Uh, we recently found out that the people hired to, to do this really suspended work on it because of issues going on with um, neighbors west northwest staff and board members and other things like that and so it's it's probably not worthwhile discussing that in detail other than um, it's it's nothing that will particularly affect our neighborhood that i can see uh, but we're still tracking it vadim tiffany do you have anything to add 
Scott, I will never ever go to a meeting that you send me to ever ever again. <laughs> um, that was that was so painful. Um, I, I hope they reconcile whatever is going on over there. Um, so, I'll... <laughs> but uh, but yeah, forever I will rue the day that I accepted your offer to go in your stead. Yeah, sorry about that. You know, uh, the thing is, I had to create the opportunity to miss that meeting by sending my daughter to college. We weren't going to do it, but I said, I have to miss this meeting and have an excuse for it. So $200,000 tuition was worth it. Trust me. <laughs> and, and I, I had, I was super lucky to be your stand and alternate it for August. And that was the, um, I had to sit in on, a, I think a two and a half, three hour, was it training <laughs> on, um, uh, inclusion harassment, um, biases, misgendering, and making sure that, essentially making sure that our neighborhood is inclusive and not t targeting people in, in situations and how to avoid <laughs> those kind of things. So um, just wanna let you all know, we, um, we're off on the right foot. So, and if anyone who wants those training materials, reach out to NWNW. I've asked for them already to share with you all that lovely, presentation or training I had to go through, um, but I haven't got the materials yet. They haven't, they haven't given them to us yet. So. Thanks, Tiffany. If you can just email them to everybody and then we can watch them at our leisure. I appreciate it. Yeah, great. Well, I'm still trying to create an excuse for the next meeting, but I already have a substitute, Bridget, lined up uh, for the October meeting. So. Um... <laughs> can I recuse? No. I, hey, listen, <laughs> I, I admire this whole group. And if you guys did it, I'm happy to do it. All right. But you're going to hear about it when we have our, our Goose Hollow. Yeah, it's, I think it qualifies as hazing. All right. Um, hey, so Scott, really quick. Um, can you inform everybody really about the vision that's trying to be, they're trying to create? Um, just a, a summary of it, just so they know what their st strategy sessions are. I think they, what they put on hold was creating a vision of what NWNW represents, correct? So I think the big issue, which they haven't even addressed yet, but they've um, asked questions about is who does, what is NWNW's mission and who do they support? And my, I, the, it's been the position of Goose Hollow neighborhood that may change with this new board, but uh, my understanding is that it still holds that uh, NWNW the intention is to be a support network for the neighborhoods that that the real work gets done by the neighborhoods to help us accomplish our mission and I'll give you an example of how they do that so for instance on the website when we designed it they actually engaged um, a, a technical consultant that they hired that was part of Neighbors West Northwest. And I worked with that person because I'm not a website designer and they helped me put the website together. And now I maintain it without their help, but anytime there's a technical issue because someone's hacked into it or something like that, they provide the resources for us to take care of that issue. Wait, wait, wait Scott, so if I understand it correctly that our website, somebody actually helped you with that, that this is what we got with the uh, consultant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure we're getting our money's worth for that, how much ever, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, I'm glad, I'm glad. Well, I, I don't think that they were really paid that much. So it's not like thousands and thousands of dollars. If, if it's um, general, but um, yeah, so, it, you know, they, they, they facilitate grants and other things like that. Doug, you want to say something? Well, if it's a Joomla website, it's not going to be terribly pretty. But um, if North, North, Northwest, Northwest, um, there is a, a movement, of course, and everything's political, and they would try to generally push it in one direction or other, and uh, to be a more of a woke organization. And uh, they'll probably stub their foot on it pretty badly because, uh, you know, yeah, that's not know. that's not supportive. But that if that's what they're trying to get toward, you know, it's uh, eventually it's going to be they're not going they're going to leave people behind. Right. We're, we're trying to keep the focus on the neighborhoods. You know, there is some talk about, well, they should also support all the different, you know, sub communities in the neighborhood. But, you know, in, in actuality, all the sub communities, you know, businesses and social groups and things like that, they should ultimately really feed into the neighborhood association and be a part of the discussion that we have here. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm of the opinion that really 
um, it it takes away from kind of the focus. If they're trying to support, you know, a thousand discussion that's ongoing, but again, that's been suspended, so we don't know. Um, the second issue that they're trying to do is find a uh, someone to take over Mark Sieber's position because he's retiring. Um, the idea is, is that he would be retiring at the end of the year, but I understand with the delay of this process um, that uh, there's not going to be a search committee established for some time, and so he's willing to stay on for a few more months while this goes on so that there is some leadership. But that's it. That's all that I know about uh, Neighbors West Northwest. Scott, thank you for providing uh, us the summary. Is, thank you. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Any anything else to cover? Actually, um, and I have a last question. We do have oh, we we lost Eric on this call, and I am looking around the room. We might have lost. Uh, it was her name, Janet. Um, we do have caller left, and his his name is Kevin Diaz. And I don't want to put you on the spot, Kevin, but this is your first Goose Hollow Foothills League meeting tonight, and I want to make sure that you know that we pay attention to you. If there is an issue that we haven't addressed, or you want to see more of, would you like to take your mute off and share with? us what you'd like to see more of in our our community or you might have just left mute on and walked away <laughs> i don't know but um kevin are you still there hmm. well if, if not um hopefully i mean he's he's uh, heard of this meeting so hopefully he's on the mailing list and feels comfortable reaching out to any one of us if he has Well, we tried. <laughs> Hopefully he's not sleeping. <laughs> I'm going to end. We have, we have 30 seconds before it gets to be nine o'clock. So I'm going to end this meeting right now. A great scene, everyone. Um, we'll see you in October. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. And I was here. I just took that long to get off mute. I'm so sorry about that. But thanks for, uh, thanks for the meeting. Yeah, kind of a goose holidays, October 9th, uh, Saturday. It's by the Mac Club over there. It's going to be fun. See you there, hopefully. Sounds good.